Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. You join us in September 2021, which means it's two years, pretty much, since I bought my E30 Touring. So in this video, I just wanted to do a bit more of a laid back, casual style, just give you guys an update on the car and also answer some questions that you guys sent me a few weeks ago. So let's jump right in. Given when I bought this car, it's not been the easiest period of time to use it with the ongoing situation in the world. There's been a lot of kind of restrictions at play here in the UK that's made it quite difficult to use, especially earlier in the year. But over the summer, we have managed to get the car out, get a few videos filmed, yeah, and shoot a few things for you guys. And I'll link the playlist up here, but one video I think you should definitely go and check out is episode one of the hunt for the UK's greatest driving roads, where we took this car out to the North Pennines and of course found some brilliant roads amongst some amazing scenery as well. And it, it was just a great trip out in the car. Nice to get it out onto some good driving roads. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of been the story this year. I haven't really done too much work to it this year, to be honest. It's kind of just been running absolutely fine. Those of you guys that have been following the channel, uh, you know, the last couple of years will know. I did a few bits when I first got the car, a few bits of rust removal, a few bits of maintenance. Uh, but aside from that, there's not really been a whole lot going on. In October of last year, I changed the discs and pads all around. And yeah, just to kind of refresh them, they were quite old, to be honest, they were quite rusted out. So yeah, just put new discs and pads on. But that has been pretty much as far as the maintenance has gone. In terms of what I've got planned for the future, well, <laughs> there is obviously a few things going on with this car that will need to be addressed in the, at some point. One of the things is the paint. Now, it might not show up on camera, but the paint is pretty terrible, to be honest. It's got uh, some quite bad sort of lacquer deterioration and also some damage to the paint anyway. So the whole thing is going to need a respray at some point. However, there's a little bit of rust in a few places. I have fixed the worst bits, which were the sunroof and the front sort of scuttle area. And I did that kind of last year. But things like the wheel arches have just got a little bit of rust building up. Nothing too terrible. And you really wouldn't be able to see unless you looked inside the arch. And same on the tailgate, there's just a few spots that I want to get sorted out around the window seal and things. But yeah, that's pretty much as far as it goes. So my point here is I don't really want to respray the car until I sort out the rust at the same time, because obviously, you know, you're going to be stripping the paint back. You may as well fix all the rust. But of course, then that means it's going to be quite a big bill, probably looking at north of £4,000, maybe five grand to fix all that. So I'm not really in a rush to do it. There's other things I can do in the meantime to keep the car running well and keep it on the road and enjoy it. And given this car is dry stored, I don't use it a whole lot over the winter months. There's not really, you know, too much urgency around fixing those small little rust areas just yet. So that's kind of looking maybe in the next few years I'm planning to do that. But I think later this year, I might give the cooling system a refresh, new radiator, possibly a few new hoses. They're actually in pretty good condition, but I might change one or two of them. Things like change the fan clutch, you know, just to make sure that, yeah, it's going to see through the warmer summer periods and things like that and not face any issues. OK, so I mentioned at the start of the video, I'd actually done a community post probably about four or five weeks ago, just asking if you guys had any questions about what it's like to own an E30. Now, I'm kind of I was planning on doing an update video on this anyway. And uh, yeah, speaking of the community page, we do a weekly poll on there that I suggest you guys tune into usually BMW related, obviously always car related. And it's really interesting to hear your guys' opinions and thoughts on things. So yeah, I'm gonna try and keep that going for as long as possible. It goes live Tuesday, 12 p.m. BST every single week. So definitely tune into that. I also just wanna say a massive thanks to all you guys who've supported the channel this year. We're nearly at 1.5K subs now, and that's a pretty big achievement for us. Uh, these kind of videos do take a long time to make and trying to kind of keep some sort of schedule this year has been our main aim. And we've achieved that so far. So we really appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll be doing a kind of update video at the end of the year, just to kind of talk about our plans for 2022 and also talk about kind of the year that's passed by as well. So yeah, thanks for all your continued support. Honestly, this channel basically would be nothing without an audience, as is the case with any YouTube channel, I suppose. So yeah, really appreciate that. But let's dive into the questions that you guys asked. So the first one is from uh, Coolcat969. Thanks for giving us this question. Would be interested to know about its general maintenance and reliability, sourcing parts and keeping it rust free, such as rust treatment and undersealing as these cars are known to rust. Had a 320i coupe in Calypso Red in the early 2000s. That's how regrettably sold. Would still love an E30 today, but prices for good ones are prohibitive. Well, yeah, a lot of good points there. Now, talking about general maintenance and reliability. Well, these cars really are as solid as a car can be if they are looked after properly. One of the key things that you can do is just regular maintenance, like oil changes, air filter changes, spark plug changes. You know, these engines aren't going to just, they're not taking time bombs like some of the later BMW engines are. Of course, one of the things I've really drilled down on is timing belt changes. This should be done pretty much every three or four years or probably around every 
what, 25, 30,000 miles these days if you're looking to keep the engine safe and in good condition. Some people will do it a lot longer than that. You can probably do in excess of four years, in excess of 50,000 miles if you so wish. However, my recommendation would just always to be keep on top of the maintenance items. It's very important as well to service things like gearbox oil, differential oil, these are things that can sometimes get overlooked and might not be done for long periods of time. And if you want to keep your drivetrain in good condition, you need to do that. In terms of reliability, well, you know, touch wood, I've never had any issues with this car. It's been very reliable the whole time I've owned it. Obviously, I did do a decent amount of maintenance when I first got it to kind of try and see me through these few years without any issues. But yeah, it's just really a matter of keeping on top of it, do the basic things and yeah, just try and keep them in good condition. In terms of keeping it rust free, well, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's not particularly easy. I'm sure you guys will know. We get <laughs> plenty of rain, plenty of cold weather, the roads are salted in the winter, which are all things that will cause rust essentially. If you can keep the car dry stored, that's definitely a benefit. Obviously, I appreciate not everyone has the opportunity to do that. But yeah, just do what you can to try and keep the car out of the worst of the weather. I try not to use this too much when the roads are really salty just because it can really build up and yeah, it can really kind of advance the rust if you like. So one of the main things you can do in winter if you are using the car is just be sure to kind of rinse it down frequently. Try and get the salt off the bodywork, rinse under the arches, all things like that. You can even rinse underneath the car if you like, just to try and dissolve that salt and get it off. The longer it sits on there, the higher the chances are of rust developing. In terms of undersealing, you know, this is something, it could be worth doing at some point. It's not something I would initially say, just could go ahead, rip all the underseal off and recoat it because actually the stuff from factory is generally very, very good. Where you might have issues is if the car has been jacked up incorrectly and it's punched a hole through, or possibly it's even been beached out somewhere and ripped a bit of underseal off. That's where you might have an issue. But in terms of just general maintenance of underseal, you don't need to worry too much. So I would just kind of keep an eye on it, have a look under the car, see if there's any exposed metal work or anything like that, and definitely re-underseal those areas if you need to. So on the last point here about uh, E30 prices, I just thought I would kind of give this a quick mention. Yes, the markets are pretty crazy at the minute. That's not just E30s, that's pretty much all used cars, to be honest. And it's mainly driven by the pandemic. You know, there's a lot of supply issues that have happened. Um, getting new cars has been quite difficult due to computer chip shortages, things like that. So it's really driven up used car prices a lot. Also, people's extra disposable income has meant people are buying classics. That's just the way it's going. So there's a lot more demand for these cars, but there are still good bargains, if you like, to be had. You don't need to find the best conditions car. Um, I was distracted by the fact it was a 2CV. You don't need to necessarily go out and try and find the best possible car you can. It's absolutely fine to get something that might need a little bit of work doing here on there. And that's how you're going to save a bit of money. So yeah, just keep an eye out. You can go across all the different sites, things like uh, carandclassic.co.uk, Pistonheads, Auto Trader, even collecting cars. You know, I've seen plenty of good value E30s for sale on these sites. And yeah, you don't have to be paying crazy money. Okay, so that sums up that one. Sorry, I went on a little bit there, but we'll jump into the next one here from James Ebden. He says, I've really enjoyed your videos and they were a contributing factor to me buying my own manual E30 cab last month. That's great. That's what we like to hear. I love to inspire you guys to go out and buy these cars and experience them as well. So he also says, I'd be interested in more on the engine sound and performance, cold air intake, more stock versus aftermarket backbox comparison. I just had the Z3 short shift fitted, which is very nice any content on that or the Z3 rack conversion would be awesome. Yeah, so thanks very much for your comment, James. Um, in terms of engine sound and performance, well, the 320i, there's not really a whole lot you can do to massively increase performance from these. If you did add a cold air intake, then you might see some very marginal power gains, maybe some increased torque a bit lower down in the rev range, but generally, these engines just aren't massively performance engines. You know, they're a single overhead cam, two valves per cylinder, there's not much airflow you're going to be able to get through the engine, therefore there's not much, much power either. Adding an exhaust, like I've done here, you can see I've got this Scorpion back box. That can add a little bit of power. We're not talking crazy figures. If you're really lucky, you might get 5 or 10 horsepower. Pair that up with a good manifold on the engine, you might also release a few extra horsepower there. So yeah, that's kind of the main things you can do. Of course, if you really want extra power, maybe just stick in the M20 B25 engine out of the 325i. That's probably a good way to get power easily. They're what, 170 horsepower thereabouts. 
add a few supporting mods on, you could be looking closer to 200 with you know things like an air intake, exhaust, stuff like that. But really, just doing the general maintenance items like I just mentioned would definitely help to make these engines produce more power and produce the power they should from factory. So yeah, that'll probably be my main thing. Uh, the Z3 short shift, I have heard about this before. I've kind of mentioned the gear shift in, in E30s is a very long shift. That's not something that really bothers me because I think that's all part of the car for me, but I totally understand why some people would want the shorter shift. So yeah, the Z3 short shift is one that you can do. I think it's fairly easy to do, to be honest. I think it's quite interchangeable. Same with the rack conversion. I've heard people doing an E46 rack conversion as well. Yet another thing I've mentioned on this, the sort of the rack that's fitted on these cars is quite slow. Some people want a faster steering rack and yeah, totally understand that. Again, that's not something I've been too bothered about because I like, I suppose, just having the feel of an 80s car. That's what it's all about. So I think that pretty much wraps it up then in terms of this video. Of course, I'm really enjoying the car still. Um, we definitely want to try and do a bit more, a few more videos on this. Speaking of which, planning to do quite a big video on this car and actually the general classic car market, the modern classic car market, a little bit later in the year when we get a chance. So you can probably expect to see that possibly October or November time. And yeah, that should be a great video. Looking forward to doing that. But yeah, apart from that, stay tuned. We've got plenty of stuff coming. Obviously, we're trying to keep up the schedule for the rest of the year. As I said, there'll be an update video at the end of the year to kind of talk about things for the future and stuff like that. I have also started a channel called FTP Garage, which is going to be, well, basically focusing on fixing up these cars, you know, that I've got. So yeah, uh, I'll leave a link down to that below. There's not really too much content on that at the minute, just because I don't really have that much time. But hopefully in the future, uh, I'll do a few more videos. And whenever I do work on this car, we'll try to film it as well. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks very much for the support this year. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.